And then automotive is another big uh, uh, opportunity uh, for AI uh, as we're moving um, you know, through the progression to uh, self-driving vehicles. So uh, just uh, some quick background. The uh, SAE has these different levels to try to describe how autonomous a vehicle is. Um, you know, right now, um, you know, we're seeing deployment of these level two vehicles where you can, um, you still have to keep a hand on the wheel, but the car can pretty much stay in the lane. It can control its own speed. And, um, you know, you, it really takes a lot of the burden off the driver. Um, but you do still have to monitor what's going on at all times. And uh, when you don't, uh, you know, bad things happen. But um, we actually have seen the first level three uh, uh, cars uh, in production now last year um, uh, from Cadillac, uh, for example. And um, they can uh, pilot uh, on the highway uh, completely autonomously um, without, uh, without driver supervision. And, um, you know, so level three means that, you know, you can, you can have this autonomous operation, but only in certain specific um, situations. And the problem with level three is, um, you know, if, if you uh, are autonomously driving on a highway, at some point, um, the driver has to take over and say, okay, now we're coming up to an exit, uh, driver has to take over. Um, and people have been concerned that, uh, you know, what if the driver doesn't take over? What does the car do? It's hurtling down the highway at 60 miles an hour. Um, and uh, so, you know, the level three deployment uh, has, has been kind of tricky. Um, and uh, what a lot of uh, companies now are focusing more on level four. Um, but that's going to take, of course, you know, longer to get there. Um, but the idea with level four is that you could at least... Uh, get in your car, and it would be able to take you from point A to point B without any uh, driver intervention at all, um, you know, possibly restricted to certain uh, roads or certain areas or certain times of day. Um, but still, that would be a, a very useful feature. So, um, so yeah, as I, as I mentioned, uh, you know, we, we're starting to see level three uh, vehicles being deployed. Obviously, they're very expensive. Um, but um, in addition to these, you know, more consumer-focused vehicles, um, we're also seeing a lot of interest uh, from, from the trucking uh, industry, uh, from uh, buses um, that uh, run restricted routes because it's very expensive to pay for drivers. And so, you know, the, the cost of this technology is not really an issue for these commercial deployments. But uh, we do expect to see the cost uh, come down over time, as technology typically does. And uh, I expect that the cost of a level three technology will probably drop below $5,000 by 2023. And uh, that will allow level three to be pretty much standard in, in all luxury uh, type cars, which is about 10% of the market. And, um, and then as, as those brands start adopting this technology, um, you know, then uh, it'll start trickling down into lower priced cars. And then the higher end cars will need to add you know, level four type features in order to differentiate. So, um, you know, we expect level four uh, to, uh, to come out in the next couple of years. And, um, you know, it may be mostly in commercial vehicles at first, um, but there's definitely an application there. And then level five uh, is probably much further out uh, to have a car that can do anything, anytime, anywhere that a human driver could do. Um, but, uh, but I think we'll see a lot of uh, uh, deployment of, of level four before then. Uh, this is just an, an example of kind of what's going on in these uh, cars. Um, you know, this is a, a picture of what a car uh, might see uh, through its camera looking forward in, a, in an urban environment. You got uh, pedestrians, you got bicycles, you got a guy unloading his truck right in the middle of the road. Um, and then uh, the, the uh, uh, AI has to process all of this. And then the green area is the, is the area that the uh, AI has determined is the safe place that the car can navigate through. And, um, and, and then the, uh, the AI has to control the car and figure out where it's actually going to go within that safe area to try to get to its destination as quickly as possible. So, um, you know, there's a lot of complexity uh, that's involved in, in these uh, self-driving applications, which is why it's been taking longer to 
get them working uh, than uh, maybe uh, people had thought initially, but uh, a lot of companies are, are spending a lot of time on this and making some good progress. Uh, two of the chip companies um, that are, are, are leading the way are, uh, again, Intel and NVIDIA. Uh, Intel acquired Mobileye, uh, which is the leader for um, more level one, uh, level two type uh, ADAS deployments, and um, uh, Mobileye has uh, some, uh, some good products that are really targeted at low cost and low power to drive these types of applications. NVIDIA has been focusing more on, on higher performance uh, products that are targeting level four, level five type uh, driving, and, um, and, and really uh, when, you, when you talk to the uh, companies, the car companies that are working on this, um, NVIDIA has uh, the majority of the, uh, the design wins uh, there uh, as compared to, uh, to Mobileye. So, um, so it, it, it'll be uh, interesting to see how quickly uh, this technology can, can reach the market. So just to, to wrap up uh, quickly, and then I can take a few questions. Uh, we talked about how uh, AI uh, acceleration is evolving from uh, SIMD-style architectures adapted from old GPUs and DSPs to more custom-designed architectures uh, with specific hardware to accelerate uh, Mac operations and other uh, specialized functions in uh, deep neural networks. Uh, this type of uh, architecture is now spreading from the data center down into uh, automobiles, into phones, into IoT devices, and uh, a lot of the focus uh, is now on uh, saving power uh, as well as performance. So, uh, you know, we see a big opportunity uh, in uh, self-driving cars, and in terms of volume, uh, IoT is going to probably swamp everything else. Thank you.